But I'm going to tell you what, it's a whole lot more of you in here than it was when it was just we two or three and no more when we was doing all that teaching and preaching and what have you. Amen. So uh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. So God bless you. God bless you for being here. Uh, let me let me make a, a mention of reminder and, and Sister Debbie, if you need to refresh me or say anything, let me know. But I think that they have graciously boxed up some uh, groceries, uh, quite a few items back there in the foyer. So stop back by there and uh, and pick those up. Am I correct in that area? So these are for you, for your blessing, for those that be interested and want to. If you don't want them, then I'm going to take them all home and sell them. Oh, my. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the, uh, for the work and the, and the donations and everything that is made. It's, I'm going to tell you that the, uh, the food pantry and the ministry of, of giving here in, in Mulberry has been, it's been awesome. I mean, week by week, week. As you know, you've been able to benefit from that on a weekly basis, uh, and a lot of that is primarily because I know that uh, Sister Debbie, she's so much involved, Brother Bill and his sister in helping her and, uh, and bringing the food and items and getting the things uh, set up for us. So thank you, thank you so very much. So don't forget immediately after the, after the uh, teaching and minister of the Word tonight, if you'd like to go with us over at Safe Haven to uh, sack up some of those things, or how Sister Monica is going to do that for their outreach ministry on Friday. We appreciate that. And then don't forget about Saturday morning, 9 o'clock. Amen. And uh, if you want to join the cooks on uh, at 8 o'clock on Saturday morning, it, it'd be nice to do that too, I suppose. Amen. But uh, at any rate, praise the Lord. That, that That's between you you and, and whomever is doing it. You, you probably don't want me to do it. Although I could fry an egg. But uh, I, I don't know if you'd be able to eat it after I got through with it or not. But uh, amen. Thank the Lord. God, God didn't call me to cook. My, my wife would give a great big amen to that. <laughs> or probably an old me. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So good, good, good. Good to see each one tonight. I want to go back, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to go back to the book of Thessalonians. Thessalonians 1. And uh, I would like to uh, continue in, in our study and talk to you about the faith report, about the faith report. There are far more faith reports uh, than what we really want to accept and what sometimes we really want to address because what so goes is by the way our faith goes. And we have to exercise our faith and believe in God and the intercession of His Spirit in it. Uh, as you remember, last, uh, last Wednesday evening, we talked to you on the faith report. We were there in, in uh, Thessalonians because uh, chapter 17 in, uh, in Acts, perhaps you read that, uh, where the, Paul was there for three weeks of ministering, and then they had to leave because of the uprising that was against them, the assault of the house of Jason, and so forth. But yet, whenever they left, because the ministry was so founded and so grounded there. They were so impressed. And so Paul was sending Timothy back to Thessalonica to get a report on it. And what he was sending him back for was the report of faith. We read into that. If you noticed last week, we, we dealt with a couple areas in particular. Uh, well, several areas. But one thing we're talking about, the devil's going to raise up roadblocks. Paul talked about the hindrances. The word hindrance means roadblocks that he had raised up. But God was the overcomer through them. They overcame. They came forth in the ministry. Then likewise, he says, for those that would receive a crown. You remember back in the first chapter, I mean the second chapter here in Thessalonians. And that crown was not a royal crown, but it was a crown of victory. It is a crown of victory. It's what it's, we are looking to receive a crown of victory. We are running this race, and as we're running this race, we want to obtain the crown of victory. When Jesus says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, thank the Lord. So we talked about knowing, knowing uh, your faith we're going to go into tonight and about the good report to rise up. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for knowing that God... that. We're just maybe limited vessels, but Lord, you're the unlimited authority and power. We just pray that you just pour in to these vessels tonight. 
the Lord, that we'd be open up our spiritual man to receive. And that, Lord, that as we're going to see in just a little bit, for our faith to increase even more. And we want to thank you tonight for that privilege and that opportunity we have. And each one tonight that we'll leave in a different way in which we've come in your name. Thank you for that anointing in receiving and giving, Lord. And we give you praise for the cover of your precious blood that makes it all possible. And all of God's children again said, Amen, amen. Chapter 3, verse, uh, if you would, 5, in a refresher here. First Thessalonians and uh, chapter 3 in verse number 5. Paul says it's for this cause. Yeah, you can stand, please. He says, for this cause, when I could no longer forbear, he had just stood it as long as he could, is what he's saying. Amen. I sent to know your faith. Paul, oh, what, uh, what a stirring to have a love for a church like that. And that's what, what Paul was relating. Lest by some means that the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. But now, when Timothy came from you unto us and he brought us good tidings of your what? And your what? Whenever we realize what that charity, what that love, what that faith combination is, I'll brief that with you in just a second. He says, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greater to see us as we also to see you. You remember those that have deposited in your life spiritually. Now, you don't remember all things, no. But those that really stood out to you that deposited the spiritual love of Christ and who we was, many of the errors as far as your growth and your maturity in Christ. You, you remember those things the next week because some were more outstanding than others in that ministry. Okay? Now, look what he says in verse number 7. Therefore, brethren, we were comforted. We were encouraged over you in all our affliction and distress and it was all by your what? In other words, all those sufferings, trials, battles, difficulties, stonings, everything in the perils of the deep, almost to the loss of life. And it even did come to the loss of life. But through it all, it was worth it because of the faith of the church that hung in there. Because remember, the church has to remain steady. We've got to stay steady. He says, verse 8, For now we live if we stand fast in the Lord. Only in the Lord do we live and we have our being. Live, move, have our being. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you for standing for the rest of the reading of God's holy word. The faith report. Here's what he is, he is alluding to and he's saying. There's nothing that, uh, that it could have been more refreshing to Paul than to be able to hear the report from Timothy to him that faith was sound that was there. He said, love is that manifestation. Then he says, faith and love, as we read in that scripture, being combined, it brings forth, listen, a living, healthy, prosperous church. So don't think it's just we three and no more. You don't see what tomorrow is, but God does. And because God does, we hold on to the faith and the anticipation, knowing God will prosper His church. As God is going to prosper His church, we understand Him. And let me give you this to know this. The Christian church needs a band of believers. Listen to me. This is what you are, who know the truth, who live the truth. Now, staggering as this is, but are ready to die for the truth. That puts it in the spectrum to where reality is when it comes to serving God. Are we willing to, to give our lives? Well, we've been blessed because we haven't come to that place to where that we have had to do that. That is so true. But yet, uh, I reminded you last week uh, about all the martyrs uh, that have taken place, uh, even from since Jesus, but just in 2019. And then, as I said, annually of those uh, 
that give their life. No, you don't hear it. The news media don't tell that. But there are people that are giving their lives for this faith every day we live, church. Man, we in America, we are to be... We ought to be so exalting God and praising Him. and We ought to be so religious, religion, that this, this nation itself is just saying, them old Christian people, they're just controlling everything. You just can't, can't keep them down whatsoever because of the blessings that we have inherited and we can enjoy here in America. And we begin to see there's a little bit of a Contour or overture that is beginning to take place in it. Let me give you a couple of things uh, this evening. Because we was looking at this, and uh, as we are looking at this, I know that we was talking about uh, faith. When faith is mixed with confidence, uh, and that faith and confidence is mixed with vision. Faith, confidence, vision. I'm telling you, church, we are steadfast, we are steady, we're going to be here till Christ comes, uh, even if it hair lips the devil. That's a day, Karen, that's not a scriptural thing. But whenever we are so confident uh, in our Lord that while we're seeing, do you still see this church full? Do you still see souls being saved? Do you still see them being filled with the Holy Ghost? Do you still see them still seeing healings uh, that, that comes forth and, and the miracles uh, in healings uh, because I, Sister Luan, I still, I still see Brother Gary. I, I still see him healed. I, I see my grandson. I see my grandson. I see him healed. I just picture it in my mind's eye. It's hard if you don't picture it in your spiritual faith. Uh, it's hard to see it to come forth in the natural. You understand what I'm saying? Make any sense? We have to believe it. Have to believe that it is so real. So upon that note, notice, notice again. He said uh, there in that verse, verse number five, he said, it's for this cause. He said that when I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Everybody say the faith report. Because it's in this faith report, there's, there's a couple of things I want to bring your attention. Number one, it is a, a desire. Everybody, everybody say, our desire. our desire. We have to have a desire. That desire came to the Apostle Paul. His desire was before anything happened in the Thessalonica church, his desire was that it was going to happen. And because of the short span that he was there, yet look what exploded into the faith and the love of that church. If you don't have a desire, it's just not going to happen. Whenever we realize of the importance of that's what he tells us there in Romans, believing for those things that are not as though they were as Abraham, you still can believe that. You can believe those children are going to be saved. You can believe that spouse is going to be saved. You can believe that those grandchildren are going to be saved. You can believe that because you have such a spiritual, honest, sincere desire that that's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you what, nobody's going to have the desire for your children and your grandchildren more than the mom and the dad and the grandma and the grandpa. Now, the others can pray and believe with you, but you know where I'm coming from and what I'm talking about. Not only our desire that is important, to, but also, let's go to it. It's talking about our faith. Everybody say our faith. our faith. What is that our faith has got to do? Here is the inspiration that's going for Number one, our faith has got to be strengthened. Number two, our faith has got to be established. Number three, our faith has got to be exhorted. Number four, our faith has got to be encouraged or comforted. Whenever we say, uh, when we're talking about exhorted or challenged or it's coming forth or when it's going to be comforted or encouraged, it is interesting because we've come too far now. Let me encourage you, church, because I've been hearing some things and hearing some prophecies that are, if you're not in tune with Christ, they're very disturbing. I'm not going to tell them to you. Don't worry. Because, hey, 
I don't know them factual. It's just, just what you hear, okay? But if just half the things that have been told come to pass in the next uh, sequences of months, uh, I'm telling you, church, you better be grounded in Christ. It's all I can tell you. And that's where your faith uh, has to be. Do you remember? Oh, it's not time to jump ship now. It's not time to quit on God now. If there was ever a time to get more rooted in, grounded in, and dug in, uh, as an old Louisiana saying, it is now. Because I believe He is going to come. Now listen to him. I think we'll say something very negative. We have no guarantee that not one of us, or maybe the majority of us, may end up go out of this life uh, before the rapture takes place uh, through cruelty and things that would be totally unexpected that would happen to God's children. Now you got quiet on me. One said, yeah, but look what happens. Look what has happened in the past. I'm just trying to encourage you. Just trying to let you know. Don't take, take things for granted. Let your faith rise up and, and know that through the, through the faith that you've invested in, in your family and, and the things that you do, don't give up. Don't give up. I, I remember scripture that, uh, that Jesus uh, told Peter. You remember whenever uh, Peter was saying, oh, praise God, hallelujah, and he was just so full of God and so forth, and uh, Jesus turned around, he looked at Peter, he said, Peter, he said, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. Do you and I think we're any better or above the apostle Peter was? But be encouraged. Listen, you remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, but Peter, I have prayed for you. Let me tell you something. Jesus has already sent up the prayer. Now he's up there with him to make the intercession. Calm down, Dave. Wow. Man, that's in my spirit. It lets us know whenever we rise up and we understand what he's talking about in the book of Luke, chapter 17. Luke, chapter 17. The apostles were questioning, said, Lord, man, our faith, man, we, we need some help. Verse 17, chapter 5 and 6. Luke 17, 5 and 6. And the apostles said unto the Lord, Lord, what did they say to our faith? Increase our faith. All of us are saying that and we want that in, in retrospect. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. Jesus did not rebuke them. I want you to get this now, what I'm fixing to tell you. Notice what he said. Jesus said to them in verse number 6, If you had faith, as a grain of a mustard seed, the smallest of all seeds, almost. The smallest of all seeds. You ascend to this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and to be thou uh, planted in the seed, he said, and it should, notice what he said, it should obey you. It comes back to the place of our dedication and our consecration that is to God. Does it happen every single time? No, it does not. But does that mean that you don't have the faith and you can't believe God that you can say on this mountain, be thou removed, cast into yonder sea, shall not doubt in your heart what God said can do? Therefore, whatsoever things you say when you believe, you shall have them. Let the faith come forth. Listen to me. Now the faith, boys, anyway, before it comes out of your mouth, let it be here. And when it's in here and it comes out of your mouth, whether it happens or not, be obedient. Be faithful to God because God going to honor His faith. Listen to me. In the book of Romans, in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse number 3, his faith that is in you. You know what? When we begin to understand some of the difficulties, here's the reason that comes behind it. I'm not going to read that entire verse, but I'm going to read this part. God has dealt or has given to every man, you can put woman in there, the 
measure of what? Listen to me. This is not talents. This is not abilities. This is faith. Just because you see someone that has seen some great things happen in them and say, boy, they're talented. We know some people have talent. Thank the Lord for you guys can sing and play. You've got the talent to do that. That's talent. But listen, just because some have talents, that does not mean that's their faith. Your faith is not talent and ability. Your faith is a measure that God has birthed in you Every individual, never say, I don't have that kind of faith. Why is you don't have that kind of faith? Don't blame nobody. God's no respecter of person, and He's given to every individual a measure. Notice, a, not the, a measure of faith. Do you know why? Am I too strong? You, because everyone cannot utilize and function and live in some faiths. If some of you, if some of you had the faith and he had given you that much faith as he did some when it comes maybe as far as the, the gifts of healings, all I can think of right off the top of my head right now. Some it goes to the head. And some what happens to them whenever God has blessed them and and he has used them. Then they blow that stuff out of proportion. Oh, Lord, help me. I'm not going to start using some of them examples. People get mad as a hornet at me. Go to sting at me. But at any rate, I, I want you to know, God loves you. And because God loves you, you can understand this. It is uh, for this cause or it's for this reason. That word cause means reason. It's for this reason uh, that Paul and the Holy Ghost uh, wants you to know your faith. Uh, and because he wants you to know your faith, and for the same reason that you go through some of the troubles and, and the difficulties that you deal with, you cannot, in other words, don't be moved. Everybody say, don't be moved. That's the third thing. Don't be moved in your faith. If you're established and you're steadfast in your faith, it is for that reason we've come to this appointed place. Now let me show you a couple of things here right quick. Everybody still with me? I like it when I like it. Hallelujah. I just hope y'all like it too. Anyway, praise God. Forgive me for my enthusiasm. But uh, notice, notice something here. Uh, it tells us in, in, the, uh, in the book of Philippians. In Philippians in, in chapter number 3, Powerful, powerful verse of scripture here that uh, that we can we can quote. But I, I want to I want to read this uh, verse of scripture to you in Philippians in chapter three and in verse number ten. Here's what Paul says to the church at Philippi. He says, "Oh, that I may know Him. Don't you want to know Him? But how bad do you really want to know Him? People lose the scope of this." Because look what he says. That I may know him and the power of the... Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I want to be lifted out of this junk. Hallelujah. And notice what he said. And uh, of his... Now, I don't know about you. Now, I'm seeing halos begin to glow out there. But I hope I've got the stamina, the stability, the faith uh, that if it comes against me, that I can hang in there. Jesus said, look what he said, the fellowship of his sufferings. I'm trying to prepare you, church, for what I feel the Holy Spirit has birthed in my spirit. The reality, and I know this, this may sound negative and you're, you're trying to preach negativism, preacher. And I'm not, I'm not trying to do that. 
But I am wanting to prepare you, church. I don't know what tomorrow holds. Like I tell you, my old cliche and my old, my old saying, this, but the one thing for sure, we know the one that holds the tomorrow. I hope, I hope you don't. I hope I don't. Lord knows. I hope we don't have to go through any suffering. But the reality is, we're not guaranteed we won't. But if we do, let's let our faith hold us steady unto death. Unto death. Look what he says next. Because it is through this, uh, through these things, uh, we are being made conformable, uh, conformable unto what is death. You know what he's saying? So we can die a victor's death. Now, I haven't been there. You haven't been there. But I sure hope and pray that I can. I hope and pray that, that through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And through it all, I hope that I can hear him say, well done, fellowship, going through the fellowship of this suffering. But I've got to remember something. All this may sound kind of negative, but I, but I think you're still with me on the same page. I want you, I want you to see the Hebrews, Hebrews chapter number 5. Hebrews chapter number 5, verse number 7 and 8. Powerful scriptures. Verse number 7, Hebrews 5. Are you ready now? Shout amen. amen. Who in the days of his flesh. Who is he talking about in the days of his flesh? Everybody say Jesus. When he had offered up prayers and supplications with what kind of crying? What this little boo? <laughs> What in this? I mean, this is sincerity and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard. Look what it says. It was heard in that he what? Who did he fear? Who did he fear? Who do we fear? God. Well, y'all didn't listen to me Sunday morning. I see that right the fear of God. He said, because I know that it is God that Jesus feared. The Son feared and referenced the Father. Remember, it's not like a boo fear. It's a fear of respect. It's a fear of awe that is there. Because our God is a God of consuming fire. Amen. And look what he said. Though he were a son, yet learned he what? Obedience. But the things that he what? Whether you like it or not, if you don't go through it, you're not going to learn it. But when you go through it, you're thinking about it. Man, man is this valley ever going to get some daisies in it? Is it ever going to get some water flowing in it? But when you get on the other side of it and you look back... You say, thank you, Jesus, for bringing me through it. Thank you for bringing me through it. Are you not stronger for the ballots that you have been through in your life and you look back at them? Is that not why Jesus can trust you with what you have right now? Even in this church, whatever you've dealt with, why are you here right now? Because you've dealt with it in faith. You had the stability. You didn't run and flee. Now, I'm going to say a strong statement. A lot of people run and flee because they don't have the stability that they need in Christ and the faith that they got to have. you got to serve and put your faith in God. That's why I'm going to make the statement again. So many times, preachers leave churches they leave churches, and I know there's going to be a certain amount that they're just, they're just going to leave because they're not happy with the, with the incoming preacher or pastor or whatever. But the bottom line, the stability has to be, because you change pastors, you don't change churches. If the pastor is not the right pastor, you pray that pastor out to get you another right pastor in. It may take a while, but thank you for that clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know why? 
because God is on your side. I've got to quit. I'm fixing to close right now. Uh, well, almost right now. Uh, I, uh, I ran across a, uh, a letter that uh, I, I can't mention. They said don't mention it because of, of the uh, ex, exploiting it to where that uh, the foreign countries can see it. And I'm going to tell you something, church. You'd be surprised at some of the foreign countries that are torturing, torturing Christians uh, even probably as we speak, okay? So I, I'm not going to tell you that, but it's some, of our, some of our faithful missionaries still on the field, and I thought this was so neat. And, man, I did not even get, and I did not read that. Man, I'm sorry, but uh, praise God. But I'm quitting anyway, so don't get scared. Okay. But uh, there was a statement uh, that was made from them. And uh, here in First Thessalonians chapter, chapter number 3, we were, we were fixing to go into that, well, if y'all let me, if you don't, then we'll do something else. But at any rate, in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse uh, 9, 9 through, through 13, uh, let me see. Let me, uh, no, let me just read verse number 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse number 9. Paul says this there. He said, uh, For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes after our God. The missionaries received this letter from house pastors in a foreign, dark country. Can I just say that? I don't think the media is going to be to. They can't do nothing with that. There are a lot of dark countries out there. But here's what it says. They said, just yesterday, a brief message from friends who serve as house pastors. It simply said, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. The message reads that they sent, and here it says, and I quote, Bring in this terrific report on your faith and love. We feel a lot better. It's especially gratifying to know that you continue to think well of us and that you want to see us as much as we want to see you. In the middle of our trouble and hard times here, just knowing how you're doing keeps us going. Knowing that your faith is alive keeps us alive. Their message to us is our message to you. Did you grasp that message? That was those, that was those pastors in that land that was telling them because of your faith, the missionaries' faith, they want to see them, and because of what they've done, that's keeping them encouraged in their work, in their ministry. I thought, is that in the Lord? Is that not neat? Wow, and I thought, wow, here we are. God led us in this, and then he gave us that, uh, that little tidbit of, a, of an insight there. Lord, there's a lot more we could say, but uh, our, time, our time is up. And uh, we, want to, uh, we want to digest, if, if that's a proper, proper statement. I hope, I hope you don't just leave the church and, you, and never think nothing else. Uh, that is said, at least think about, well, that preacher talked about faith tonight. He talk, uh, talked about that church there at Thessalonica, Acts chapter 17. And, uh, man, he talked about, talked about our, our desire. He talked about stand firm and do it. He talked about our faith and so forth. Uh, let, let it get into your spirit. Think about it. God's given you that faith. You have it. There you were times it. I didn't know right Let him. from wrong. Let him stir it in every situation God and increase it. You can have the increase of faith. You believe that? that Amen. Amen. To make me Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Praise God. Amen. We are doomed to succeed to what no man for this world and his glory has ever seen. Good. That is the statement today. Good statement. Praise God. Good to say it's true now because of Amen. 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 Are you looking for him? Slip a hand up. Lord, we love you. We're looking for you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your holy, 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 holy spirit. In your precious, 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 precious blood. Thank you for his cleansing, for his covering, for its intercessions. Thank you for this good word, Lord, from Revelations. Oh, Father God, you are worthy, 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 worthy. Oh, have you learned to trust him? Oh, yes, we have. Stand with us, would you, if you can? We depend upon his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Hallelujah. Anyone else got anything brother, like Brother Don shared? Don't want to knock anyone out if you have. Praise God. Hey, this is Wednesday evening. This is when you let your hair down when you got it. <laughs> Jesus, thank you for this great church. Thank you for these faithful members and these individuals. May your love just be wrapped around them in the cover of your blood and the intercession of your blood upon them, Father, as we commit them into your care and your protections in every, every, every area. In Jesus' name, thank you for the blood. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen. God bless.